Hi guys, this is BSK and today we are going to discuss about some serious stuff. So in 2009, NASA installed a Kepler telescope in Earth's orbit just to find Earth-like revolving planets around the universe. And they did find some. Uh, one of them is Kepler 1638b. But the only problem is, it's 28 trillion kilometers away from Earth. And uh, so with the given technology humans have, it would have taken us humans around 2 billion 407 million 99,635 days to get there. So it's quite difficult to get there. Uh, all this crap just to make one point. We already have this beautiful planet where every ingredient is just enough for the nourishment of life like oxygen, water, gravity and this atmosphere. And it's not in our best interest to take it for granted. But guess what? We are taking it for granted. So it all started in 19th century when industrialization was booming. Due to burning of fossil fuels, a huge amount of carbon was being emitted in there. And in 1950, Earth saw the rise of carbon like never before. Uh, of such fossil fuel companies, Exxon was one such company where people had already predicted how miserable the coming future was going to be if the situation continues. Uh, they could have stopped it, but they did quite opposite. According to Mother Jones magazine, between 2000 to 2003, Exxon channeled around $8 million to 80 different organizations to change opinion of people about global warming. So selfish of them. But then we continued driving vehicles and emitting carbon dioxide in the air. And then we kept on doing cattle farming, which uh, emitted methane and nitrous oxide, which is actually more thicker than carbon dioxide. So we are as responsible as those companies. Hey, but how do these gases warm up the planet? So when sun rays bounce on Earth's surface, they are supposed to get reflected back into the space. But due to these molecules of carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide, these sun rays get trapped in the molecules of these gases. So eventually, more the gases, more will be the temperature rise. According to an ongoing temperature analysis, the global Earth temperature has increased up to 0.8 degrees Celsius since 1880. And this 0.8 degrees Celsius is already giving us a bad time. Due to global warming, ice in Antarctica and Greenland is melting. Due to that, global sea level is rising. Scientists say by the year 2100, cities like Tokyo, Mumbai, New York, and entire nations like Bangladesh will be submerged in water. By the year 2050, 150 million people will live under waterline level of high tide. 300 million people will live in areas with constant flooding. And we have already experienced this in India when in 2019, entire Kerala was underwater and cities in Maharashtra like Pune and Kolhapur were crying for help. As per the information received from the Ministry of Home Affairs, approximately 2,405 lives have been reported to be lost during the financial year of 2018-19 to due to extreme weather conditions. Droughts in India are so worse that the NCRB National Crime Records Bureau of India reported that approximately 3 lakh farmers committed suicide since 1995 and out of this around 60,750 farmers were from Maharashtra. While the physical impacts of climate change are well known, scientists have also begun to recognize mental impacts of climate change in the last decade. So climate change is affecting every sector of human life. Between 2030 to 2050, climate change is expected to cause around 2,50,000 additional deaths per year. So is Earth really going to end? Probably not. But if we keep on going the way we are, Definitely, Earth will not remain habitable for long. But we intelligent species won't let it happen. Therefore, on Earth Day 22 April 2016, 175 world leaders came together and signed a Paris Agreement. Dear friends of planet Earth, thank you for coming to the UN headquarters today. Under this Paris Agreement, many nations started to take major steps. 
like Bangladesh installed around 4 million solar plants. China invested around 126 billion on renewable energy. Sweden is up to reach 2030 target by 12 years early. And Scotland is going to have world's first floating wind farm. Awareness of climate change amongst people is increasing. Greta Thunberg, a 16-year-old girl, stood in front of Swedish parliament just to protest against climate change. And today, she's an internationally recognized climate activist. Also in India, 11-year-old girl Ridhima Pandey filed a complaint against government's lack of action on climate change. And in New York, she was with Greta Thunberg while protesting against climate change. So a lot of good stuff is happening around us. But is that enough? Because as of today, IUMO added around 1,840 new species of plants and animals to the catalogue of its extinction, making the total go up to 30,000 species. And according to WMO, around 22 million people have been displaced due to extreme weather conditions. So, it's really bad. Just for a fact, I'll let you know, of all the carbon emitted, 71% industries are responsible. And for the remaining 29%, we individuals are responsible. So, we had a chat with climate activist Ridhima Pandey on how to reduce carbon footprint on individual level. And here's what she said. So, as we all know that now, climate change and global warming has become a very big threat for us and for our future. So, if we want to limit its effect, we should follow some measures in our life. And these measures are, we should stop wasting paper, we should use public transport, we should not use plastic, we should save electricity and water, and we should do carpooling. You heard her. In fact, I would go further and say use cycle if you want to travel below 10 kilometers and try reducing your meat and dairy products intake because cattle farming emits methane and nitrous oxide as you know and it's more thicker than carbon dioxide. If you want to know about me, I use only cycle as means of transport uh, as long as I want to travel within the city. Uh, it's good for health and it's uh, too much fun. And I turned vegan. It was hard at first, but now I feel healthy and alive like never before. Now here's something totally out of context, but bear with me, it will make sense. So you know Harappa and Mohenjo-daro civilizations, one of the oldest civilizations. Uh, so we found it in 20th century and then we started predicting the possibilities of its vanishment. Uh, now cut to couple of thousand years from now, from 2020. Uh, there are some different intelligent species and they have found broken walls of Taj Mahal and they are now, they are now trying to predict why we went extinct. The only way to prevent that from happening is to control temperature rise. Scientists say we only have 10 years to control our temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius. We go above that and we are totally screwed. The situation goes truly out of control. Believe me you, we are living in an era where our every step is going to decide lives of this and coming generations. So please stand up and get ready to fight against climate change. And change your daily habits, change your lifestyle and shake things up. Because if you don't do that, climate change will do it for you. Besides, you know what, NASA and SpaceX is trying to make Mars habitable for humans but it will take around uh, one or two centuries to make it habitable and after that also we don't know if it's gonna be totally habitable for humans so for now we only have this earth to worry about